More evidence for Noah's flood that science has no answers for. Zero. All right, let's see it. Take a look at this picture and tell me what you see. Fossils of a rapidly buried school of fish. If you set a school of fish frozen in time while swimming, you win. Winning. And this is a problem for science. <laughs> no, it's not. Why? Because they believe this is how fossils formed. Fish dies, falls to the ground, whatever, somehow they get buried, and bingo bongo, fossils. No, that's only the most common way that it occurs, but fossilization can happen in a variety of different ways, including rapid burial caused by some kind of catastrophic event that instantaneously kills and buries specimens. And that's why we have fossils of animals copulating and of animals in the middle of trying to eat other animals. So this is just a flagrant misrepresentation of the science here. When paleontologist Roy Plotnick saw this specimen, he said, and I quote, gee god, little g, god, that's an interesting specimen. I can't picture a three-dimensional school of fish sinking to the bottom and maintaining all of their relative positions. That makes no sense to me. Dr. Mizumoto, who's the scientist who studied it, argued for an instantaneous burial model, which is what it looks like, right? But a third scientist, Dr. Benton, said, we don't have evidence for that. We don't have evidence that these fish were swimming when they were fossilized? It's literally written in stone. It's literally not, and it's very clear that this creator did not read this paper and has no idea what it's trying to accomplish, much less the concerns of these other scholars. The point of this paper is to try to suggest that we could use this fossil to study the swimming behavior of prehistoric schools of fish. But in order to do that, we need to be confident that they are in the position they are in in relation to each other because of their own behavior and not because some outside force has moved them into that position, like a mud flow or a water or air current. And these other scholars are pointing out we don't have direct physical data to demonstrate that these fish were rapidly buried. Now in the paper, they go through and they run a bunch of computer simulations to try to determine the odds that these fish are in the position they are in because of their own behavior rather than because of some outside force. And the results suggest that it is very likely they're in that position because of their own behavior. But as the authors of the study note, they don't have direct physical evidence of what caused their burial and so they can't say for sure it was precisely this. They only have this one thin slab, so they don't know what the sediment above or below or around it looked like, so they can't say, ah, it was a mudslide, or ah, it was something else. They have to hypothesize that. And rapid burial happens all the time, as I already explained. It is not a mystery. It is not something science is at a loss to explain, and it is not best explained by a global flood. Guess where the frozen in time swimming fish fossil was found? Wyoming, USA. Yeah, this Wyoming. The one right in the middle of North America. So here this creator seems to be suggesting that there's no way to explain why undersea fossils were discovered in Wyoming. But this fossil comes from a famous place called Fossil Lake where there are all kinds of different undersea fossils preserved in spectacular detail because of the fine sediment that was there. And Fossil Lake was connected with a larger prehistoric lake called Lake Gosut. Here's an image of the different prehistoric lakes that are known to have been located in this region. And this image shows four different periods in the prehistoric geologic existence of Fossil Lake and the larger Lake Gosut. According to the Bible, when the flood happened, the fountains of the Great Deep opened up. Waves of mud rapidly burying and freezing in time the swimming school of fish. Although it remains unclear how the fish shoal's structure was preserved in the fossil, does it remain unclear or do they just refuse to believe the obvious answer? It remains unclear because we do not have the direct physical data to demonstrate the process by which this rapid fossilization took place. If this creator had bothered to actually read the article, they would see that the authors explain precisely this going on. In the present study, we similarly assume that our fish shoal was fixed near instantaneously so that individual positions and heading directions were preserved in the fossil. This taphonomic process must have been rapid enough to maintain the trend of the interaction rules 
but it appears not to have preserved the structures of the shoal completely. The presence of several abnormal individuals heading in opposite directions suggests that their positions were somehow modified. Rapid fixation of the fish shoal might be possible by sand dune collapse on shallow water, which can produce a bed in only seconds or minutes. Unfortunately, we could not obtain any evidence to support the occurrence of this event from the specimen, which consists of a very thin slab, giving no information about the overlying or underlying layers or the entire bedding structure. To estimate how the fish shoal was fixed would require comprehensive geological information about the rocks surrounding the fossil, including the sequence of sedimentary structures, stratification patterns, and lithic characteristics, which would be possible by fieldwork. Sudden freezing caused by supercooling could also explain rapid fixation, although this seems unlikely given the warm climate estimated for the Eocene Green River formation. So, unbeknownst to this creator, the rapid burial and subsequent fossilization of these fish is not something inexplicable by science. These other scientists are concerned about the lack of direct physical data to determine the precise process of the burial of these fish. They are not saying, we don't know how to handle this, therefore it can't be that, which is what this creator seems to think, which is bafflingly uninformed. Imagine a world where science was just letting the evidence speak for itself and not trying to hide our true history. Uh, evidence doesn't speak. It can only be interpreted. And these scientists are interpreting this evidence a lot more carefully than this creator. There is absolutely nothing about this fossil or about any other fossil that has ever been discovered that is better explained by an appeal to a global flood than by the academic consensus. Imagine the unthinking hubris it must take to presume to condescendingly lecture scientists about their academic specialization when you not only know absolutely nothing about the methods, the history, or the data of those specializations, but when you don't even bother to read the research that you're pretending to critique.